New political fallout over a special congressional election in a South Texas district. Myra Flores, a Republican, winning that seat. It's one that Democrats have held since the year 1870. Flores set to become the first Mexican-born congresswoman. She's also the wife of a border patrol agent and made the economy and border security a huge part of her campaign. Flores will only serve through January as a newly redrawn district is seen to favor Democrats. Uh, but uh, we, Niall, this, Niall Standage is joining us, White House columnist for The Hill. Uh, this is certainly a, a big story, uh, not just for Texas, but when you look at whether or not there is going to be a red wave uh, come this midterm election season. South Texas, of course, uh, increasingly affected uh, by the crisis along the Mexico border. Did that play into these results or are there other factors at play here? It did play into these results. There's no question about that. There was some polling to suggest that the migrant issue was the top concern, but not overwhelmingly so, Adrian. It was part of a mosaic of issues that included the economy, which I think you mentioned, you know, obviously incorporating jobs, inflation, gas prices. Crime was also an issue. But yes, migration played into this. And, uh, you know, as you rightly mentioned, the congresswoman-elect did a good job of weaving the political and the personal by emphasizing, for example, her uh, connection via her husband, who is a Border Patrol agent. Yes, and her own, I mean, her birth, her birthright, mm. uh, born in Mexico, coming here. Whenever I've gone down to the border, it's quite interesting. There is a lot of diversity of opinion and thought. Uh, I mean, you can hear what people say who don't live anywhere near the Texas-Mexico border till the cows come home. But there are a lot of people in this country, including Mexican Americans, who want a stronger stance on migration policy. Uh, a lot of Republicans are actually pointing to former President Trump making gains with Texas Hispanic voters in the year 2020. But two years later, are we still seeing the consequence or the um, ramifications of that? How has the Texas playbook changed? I think we are seeing some consequences of that, and I think it's part of a bigger shift. And I think you raised a really, really important point, Adrian. Um, Latinos or Hispanics, understandably, don't necessarily like that uniform grouping, as if, you know, a 60-year-old rancher in South Texas and a 25-year-old computer programmer in Los Angeles are not going to have disparate opinions. In South Texas, as you probably know, there are many Hispanic people who have lived on that land and their ancestors have lived on that land for a very, very long time, the so-called Tejanos. And they don't really consider themselves immigrants for obvious and accurate reasons. And that tends to lead them to be less uh, impressed by the democratic appeal to be uh, favorable toward immigrants or to adopt a liberal attitude toward immigration. Well, let's talk about what uh, Democrats are saying right now. The chair of the Democratic congressional arm, Sean Patrick Maloney, has played down Flores' win. As I spoke about at the very top, she's only going to be in office until January. But uh, he says, I think the Republicans spent millions of dollars to win a seat that's going away. We are going to win this seat when it matters. And Democrats also pointing to low voter turnout in this particular race. So uh, is there anything pointing to the fact that this is a one-off or could this be a predictor of what's to come in the midterms or the general election? That yeah, th that's one of those rare instances where those options aren't mutually exclusive. There were specific things about this race that were unusual, including the very, very low turnout and the disparity in campaign spending. But when you look at the bigger picture, Adrian, it's very clear that Democrats are losing ground with Hispanic voters, particularly in South Texas. And that is a real problem. For years, Democrats hoped that the growth in the Latino population would simply deliver them victories without them necessarily doing very much to, uh, to achieve them. That proposition has been pretty much torn apart in recent years, I think. And Latino voters, as you have been uh, alluding to, are not a monolith. And that's something that right. everybody needs to pay attention to. Niall, happy Friday, friend. Happy Friday to you too, Adrian. I hope you have a lovely weekend. You too. See you next week. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.